Hi, recently one of you asked me to calculate the rainfall index based on rainfall data and supplied me with a ton of data. So we already went through a whole video of how to take this text file of string data with a ton of numbers, names, places, everything, and turn it into usable data. If you haven't already checked that video, I'd recommend watching that one first. So this one is a continuation of that, and we're gonna be talking about how to do some analysis on the data set. Now, I will tell you, I looked at a lot of different information of standardized precipitation index, rainfall index, and a lot of different stuff out there, and I am not a rainfall expert, and I know even more so now that I am definitely not aware of what's all out there. Um, so that's just being honest. I always work with an expert of the data whenever I'm doing an actual development of some type of application or analysis or anything like that. So either it's data that I'm an expert in or it's data that I'm not an expert in, but I have an expert on the team who knows their data. And so we go through this whole process together of talking about, well, what's your data? What is it that you're trying to find in your data? And what does this actually mean in a real world context? So with my limited knowledge and some research in Google and all of that, I've done some initial analysis on this data that we can go through together. As you recall, I have all my usable data in the second column of location. Now I can just continue on and go to my next line of code and do another for loop that's doing exactly what I did before to go through the data. Um, it wouldn't make a lot of sense to do that. So instead, I'm going to go inside my existing for loop and right after I store that data or right before I store that data, I'm going to start analyzing that data. So I'm going to look at the data and say, all right, what do I want to know? What is important to me? Now, again, remember I was asked to find the rainfall index and I apologize. I don't know exactly what you wanted with the rainfall index, but I'm gonna go ahead and move forward with this standardized precipitation index because that's the most commonly seen one that I could find. With this standardized precipitation index or SPI, you categorize the type of environment. So is it extremely wet to extremely dry and everything in between? And the way that you do that is based on probability. So if you have a statistical toolbox with your MATLAB license, then you can do some different things with distribution fits and looking for the probability that way. I don't have that on my personal computer, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go through with a simple probability based on the event. And since everything seemed to look at month data separately and then looking at it overall, so probability per month and then finding the overall probability like average across. So I'm gonna do that kind of pattern and just say what's the probability of the event of rain in every single month. So then based on the probability of rain being that never going to happen, 0% probability to always gonna happen raining 24 seven, one, then that's my range of how likely it is to rain. So again, any amount of rain greater than zero will then count as a positive yes, it will rain towards my probability. If it rained five days in, 28 days of data, then it's going to be 5 divided by 28. That's my probability for that month. And if I'm saying 28 days, most likely it's February, or it's one of my months where I had a bunch of missing data, and it, well, two or three missing data points. So again, remember, I did have missing data. I just made an empty null. That way it wouldn't affect any means or anything like that that I'm looking at in the data. So the first thing that I found when I was doing my cell to mat and trying to look at my data is I started seeing NAN pop up, meaning I had some not a numbers that were happening. So the first thing I needed to do was go back and then where I parsed my data and say, okay, if it's NAN, don't add it, change it and make it missing data. So for some reason, there might have been something in the string that just didn't quite register correctly. And when I did string to double, it just came out NAM. Um, maybe there was an underscore or maybe a letter somehow popped in there. Not sure why that happened, but I didn't know it was there. So I did need to make sure that just to replace it with missing data. So rather than going through every single instance one by one, I'm just going to say if it's NAN, just ignore it, make it missing data. That's another empty bracket. Now, if there were a lot of NAN and I just converted all my data to missing data, it'd be a huge problem, but I didn't see a huge impact. So I just decided to continue moving forward with this. Um, in my actual data set, again, I'm looking for probability, but I decided I also want to add in mean, median, min, and max, just so I could know a little bit more about my data, have a little bit more context. 
Now, when I first looked at mean, the averages were a little high, and I was kind of confused by this, but then when I looked at the maximum, all of a sudden I saw a bunch of values that were in the 300,000, very high range, and that didn't make a lot of sense to me. So again, I went over to Google and I said, okay, what's the most that it can actually rain in one day? And I found that around 71 inches is the most that has ever historically rained in one day. So I decided to move forward with that and say, okay, that's my maximum. Now, a lot of my data was in the hundreds, so that wouldn't quite make sense. I'd be eliminating a ton of my data. So I had to think about, well, what could be the issue here? Uh, units. So I had to look at units of my data set. Now, when I looked at the units of my data set, it was in millimeters. So it's very good that I didn't just eliminate anything over 71 um, because, again, that would be in inches and my data sets in millimeters. So I changed that 71 to millimeters and then I said, OK, that's my maximum. So then I said any data point that is over the most it's ever rained, then that's going to be eliminated. And then I eliminated the NANs and anything that was a really high number. And again, I did look at the data for those to kind of investigate what could be happening. And it seemed like maybe there was supposed to be a space somewhere. And I couldn't differentiate, like, where was that supposed to happen and what data goes where. And then some of them, it was just on the very end. So it might have been maybe like latitude, longitude data that I didn't catch was there at the end of that list. I don't really know why that was happening. But again, I took care of it by just removing anything over the maximum amount it could rain in the day. Once I finished up cleaning the data again, I looked at my analysis and my results, and I didn't see anything that seemed like a huge outlier. I didn't see any huge maximum values. I didn't see any unrealistic minimums because the minimum was zero, meaning no rainfall. If there was negative numbers, then I could have also questioned that. Um, and then I looked at the averages and the median. Median for every word was pretty much zero. So um, if you were to take all the data and then you just go right to the middle, what's the middle point? Most of them are all zero. In fact, I think all of them are zero. And so that seemed fine. Um, I did have one where I had a probability of one, meaning that it rains 100% of the time, all the time, every day it is going to rain. So that seemed very unrealistic. I looked at the source of that data and there was only one day of rain recorded and one day of data recorded. So I eliminated that data from my data set. So one of the things is I added in if there was a probability of one, if my highest probability was one and that happened, how as long as that happened, just keep removing that data. Because again, that's not going to happen. That's not likely. And on the flip side, I could say the same thing about zero. If I'm getting perfectly zero, perfectly one, most likely I have um, an inadequate data source. And so meaning I probably have very limited amount of data, like maybe I collected data for five days in a row or five days total or 10. Even a month of data really isn't enough based on everything that I was reading. Um, some things say that you want 30 years and some things said um, 24 months and a minimum of like six months. And there was a different range of recommendations for this. But bottom line, if I'm getting a probability of zero or I'm getting a probability of one, then I know there's probably something faulty with the data that I have. And it's, and then I know if I'm getting a probability like that, it's probably an insufficient amount of data and I shouldn't move forward with it. So just eliminate that. So now I have all this data, again, filtered out anything that seems like a major outliers, took care of some things where the data wasn't calculating correctly. And I'm thinking, OK, well, what about my data? What am I looking at now? So the next thing I decided to do was I did a bar graph to see how many places were extremely dry versus all the way up to extremely wet, and then look at this bar graph to kind of understand the area that I'm looking at. So when I first did this, I looked at it and I said, oh, shoot, I'm having a ton of extremely dry, pretty dry, moderately dry, some normal, and it, this is a very skewed graph. Um, maybe I did something wrong with that analysis. I know I didn't do like the rigorous distribution fit to find the probability of each different location, but I did a reasonable estimate on probability and I should have fairly valid data. But notice I'm questioning what might I have done wrong in the analysis, not just assuming that everything is correct. So this is where real world context again can help a lot. So I stepped back and I said, okay, again, let me go back to my data. Let me understand my data. Where is this data for? Because again, as I said, one of you shared it with me. I don't know anything about this data really. And I'm just keep getting more and more familiar with it the more that I'm interacting with it. 
So I started looking at, okay, these location names, like I don't know where these are, so I should probably Google them and look them up. So when I looked this up, I realized my data was from Telangana, India. And now I don't know much about this area, so I had to look that up. And when I read more about the area, it said that there's a lot of, it's a desert, it's dry, and it's pretty arid there. And um, they have like a monsoon season is probably their primary rainfall. And so then I could start to see, yeah, the probability of rain is probably pretty low. And again, these places are known to be moderately dry or extremely dry in most of this area. So therefore, my data makes sense. What I'm seeing in my analysis is making sense. So I can stop questioning so much what I did and start saying like, okay, it seems aligned to the real world content. Now, a lot of times I see people look at their data and just stop there and they see their analysis and they're done. So huge problem. We need to go a step further and we need to compare it to a real world context. And now sometimes I see people start going to that stuff and say like, OK, how does this compare to a real world context? And then they say, oh, it doesn't align. Everything's wrong with the real world. Like all of that's bad. All of this is wrong. My analysis is perfect. OK, that's denial and pretty egotistical. So I always recommend at this point to take a step back and say, what could I have done wrong? Maybe I made that assumption of that 71 inches um, for millimeter data and I didn't convert my units. And I need to think about, okay, again, if my analysis isn't aligned with everything that's out there, even a little bit, I really need to go back and look at what I'm saying and look at what I did. Now, sometimes we will have a new discovery in analyzing data that might not align with things that have ever been seen. And that's okay, that could happen. But again, that's very unlikely and it's few and far between. So it's better to first look at, okay, all these major points, are my units aligned? Did my analysis make sense? And if I'm still seeing some revolutionary new information, well, then I need to talk to other people and show them my analysis, show them my data, talk to them about it. Because if I have come up with something revolutionary new, then I should probably share it with others. And if it's not, well, somebody else will hopefully help catch my error and what went wrong. So as always, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, I always appreciate the comments. And if you have more data sets you want to send over, yeah, I'll check them out. So it sounds like fun. Um, if you want to check out more videos on plotting, I recommend checking out my plotting playlist to go through a bunch of different ideas of how to plot data, visualize data, all of that. And if you're looking for more videos on how to just analyze data, understand data, specifically Excel data, I recommend checking out my playlist on everything Excel and looking through data. And that's all for now. So I hope you have a great one. And if you want to see more videos, as always, please be sure to subscribe. I appreciate any likes, appreciate the support and the comments and all of that. And I'll see you soon.